Welcome to section 14.3 for Algebra 2 Trig. This is polar coordinates. We're going to graph polar coordinates and we're also going to graph polar equations. And along the way, we're going to transform between polar coordinates and rectangular coordinates and polar equations and rectangular equations. So there's a lot of material here. If you need to take a break, feel free to stop and come back to it or just read the book. It might help you even more and take less time. So this is what's called a star map. You see at the star map, it's kind of all based from the center. In the center, there's a star called Polaris. This is also known as the northern star. It's the brightest star in the northern sky. Now, this map basically shows the position of all the constellations relative to Polaris. Now, obviously, in space, there is no north. This is based on our perception. But what you can use is this to do some stargazing. Now, it's hard to do stargazing in the Bay Area because there's too much air pollution. But if you go out to the mountains, maybe you'll see things a little more clearly. So this is the polar coordinate system. And it's going to be used to show two things. And this is just very general. Whereas with the coordinate system, the regular Cartesian system, we had an x and a y. Here you have something that we're going to call r and theta. And you're going to use them to measure two different things. One, you're going to measure how far away a point is. How far away a point is from a certain point, which we'll call the pole. Secondly, you're going to be able to state what direction the object is in relative to that pole. Okay, So how far away a point is and the direction. So parts of the polar coordinate system. There is a point O which we will call the pole. And if you take a look at this background behind me, you will see something that looks like a polar bear. At the very center, this is going to be called the pole, where I'm pointing. I don't know if you can see it on the video. You're also going to have a ray starting from the pole that's going directly to the right. This is called the polar axis, and it has O as its endpoint. So this is the starting point. Just like when we did angles and standard position on the coordinate plane, you had a point at 0, 0 going to the right. Here you're going to have a pole at point O going to the, and a ray going to the right called the polar axis. The polar coordinates of P are an ordered pair R comma theta, where R is OP, the length of OP, and theta is the measure of the angle from the polar axis to the segment OP. So basically what you have is you have a point P. So this is a distance from O. This is what we're going to call R. You're also going to have another coordinate, which is an angle called theta. And it's just like when we measured angles in standard position. It's the distance from the polar axis in degrees or radians of the angle from the polar axis to R. And mostly in this section, we will be using degrees, I'm sure, most to most of your delight, instead of using radians. But you can graph them in both ways. So this will look more, uh, make more sense when we take a look at some of the actual graphing. So you're going to use a polar grid to graph. And unfortunately, I don't have any polar graphing paper. But you can find polar grids like this on the internet. And you can probably find polar graphing paper if you were just Googling it finding a page with multiple circles like this, and you can print it out and do it at home. Now, we won't be doing much graphing. The graphing we do do will be done either on Desmos.com or on your TI calculator. If you don't have either of those, it's a good time to get one. In the summer, especially when the back-to-school still start, you can get a, usually get a TI-83 for about 60 70 bucks and a TI-84 for under 100 Anyways, we use a polar grid that looks like this, and we'll break down the little components of this in a moment well, right now. So R is called the radial coordinate, and theta is the angular coordinate. So you don't necessarily need to know these terms, but you do need to know what R and theta measure. So the concentric circles here on this graph represent one unit of R, and the degrees around represent theta. So this first red circle represents all the points that are one unit away from the pole. The second circle are all the points that are two units away from the pole. All right? Now, of course, this is 1, 2, 3, but you could also make it 2, 4, 6, or whatever scale, just like when you graphed on x and the y axes. So let's graph some polar coordinates. If we were to graph the point 2, 150 degrees, remember this is r, theta, this is what you would do. You would go to the second circle, which is this one here, and let's start here. And we would go counterclockwise 150 degrees, and we would end up at this point which is where 2, 150 is. So again, if your theta is positive, you're going to start at the 
correct concentric circle depending on your R. So for R, you're going to start at 2, which is out here. Then you're going to go 150 degrees counterclockwise, and your point's going to be right there. If you were to graph 3, 210 degrees, you would go to the third concentric circle, and then go 210 degrees counterclockwise, and you would end up at this point right there. So notice that the grid is broken down into different multiples. Some will also have 45 degree multiples, so it makes it easier to graph points. So then you would just basically have these points that represent, again, how far a point is from the center, in this case, three units, and in what direction, 210 degrees from the polar axis. If you had a negative r, it's not a problem. You would just go to theta and then go r units in the opposite direction from the pole. So let's see how this works. If you were to graph negative 2 comma 60, you still pick the second concentric circle and you still go counterclockwise 60 degrees. But instead of plotting the point here, two units from the center, you are going to go the other direction. So you're going to put a point two units from the center in the opposite direction. So your final point is actually down here. So if you have a negative r, again, you're going to do the normal thing with the angle and the concentric circle, two units away. But instead, you're going to go in the opposite direction. So this is now two units from the center, negative two units from the center, at an angle of 60 degrees. You can also add a negative theta. So if theta is negative, you're going to go clockwise theta degrees and then just graph normally. So if you had the coordinates 2 comma negative 60 degrees, you would still pick the second concentric circle, but now you would go clockwise 60 degrees and you would leave your point there two units away from the pole. So that means that one point can have many different polar coordinates. Unlike xy, where each point is a unique pair, that's not the case with polar graphing. So if you had a point 1, 120 degrees, which is represented by this green dot, you can also call this 1, 480 degrees. You would just go around one time and then another 120. This is also the same as 1, negative 240. If you started here and went negative 240 degrees clockwise, you would also end up in the same place. This is also the same as negative 1, 300. So if you started here, went all the way to 300, but now because your r is negative, you go one unit in the opposite direction, you're going to end up there. That's also the same as negative 1, negative 60. So if you were to graph both with negative r and negative theta, you would first start here one unit away and then go 60 degrees clockwise because it's negative. But because your r is negative, you would go in the opposite direction. So you would end up, instead of being here, you would go all the way up there. So each point can have an infinite number of polar coordinates. And it could be based on plus or minus r. Well, the r is going to only be the plus or minus whatever the r is. But the angles, there are infinite possibilities. So let's take a look at example one. Let's graph the points a at 4, 60 degrees, and b, negative 3, 45 degrees. So why don't you give those a shot? There is some graph paper on your paper. So check your answers by, after pausing the video and putting your answer on the paper. All right, so let's take a look at how this works. Let's graph point A first. We go 60 degrees. So notice this graph is actually broken down into 30 degree increments. So two of these little axes, or these radial spokes, are 30 degrees. So this is 60 degrees. We are picking the fourth circle from the center, and we put a point there. That is point A, 4, 60. For B, our Theta is still positive, so we're going to go to the third circle, 45 degrees. So the 45 is going to be halfway between 30 and 60. And But instead of putting it here, you're going to go opposite direction from the pole, so you're actually going to end up out here, negative 3, 45 degrees. When polar and rectangular coordinates are used together, polar act, the polar axis coincides with a non-negative x-axis. So notice that the polar axis would be right on top of the x-axis going positive. Formulas can be used to convert from one system to another. Now the formulas are going to look very familiar. So instead of a point having r comma theta, we can also express it in terms of x comma y. So we remember these back in chapter 13. x equals r cosine theta and y equals r sine theta. All right. So remember cosine theta equals x over r, and sine theta is y over r. Now to go from rectangular to polar, first you need to go with r equals plus or minus the square root of x squared plus y squared. This is basically the Pythagorean theorem. So if you remember 
the point P is basically R units away and you can build it using the coordinates of X and Y using the Pythagorean theorem. Therefore, cosine theta is X over R, sine theta is Y over R. So these are very familiar formulas and you can use these to convert from rectangular coordinates to polar coordinates and that's what we're going to do now. So example 2a, find a pair of polar coordinates for the point negative 3 comma 3. So there's negative 3 comma 3. This point is in quadrant 2. Now keep that in mind because that means your angle, if you have a positive r and a positive theta, is going to be between 90 and 180 degrees. So we first have to find r. So r is easy to find. You just use the Pythagorean theorem or the distance formula. Basically, how far is it away from 0 comma 0, the pole? So r equals plus or minus the square root of x squared plus y squared. Plug those in. And you get that r is plus or minus 3 root 2. Now I put plus or minus because if you want to use a negative r, you can. Just remember your theta is going to be different. But we'll probably stick with the positive one for most. Well, except we need a pair. So you probably want to keep the negative one. All right. So there's r, 3 radical 2. So if we have a plus or minus 3 radical 2, we choose a positive r, then our theta will be in quadrant 2. If you choose a negative r, now your theta is in quadrant 4 because the polar coordinate is quadrant 2. Remember, if you were to do a theta in quadrant 4, then you would go with a negative r in the opposite direction. So you can try that and it'll make sense, I think, if you plug in some numbers. So now let's find theta. Now it doesn't matter if you use cosine or sine. You only have to use one. You don't need both. And basically when you get a question like this, it's probably, probably going to be a 30... 45 or 60 degree reference angle. So let's use sine. So sine theta is y over r. We know what y is because y is 3. That's the y coordinate. r is 3 radical 2. So let's use 3 radical 2. So sine is radical 2 over 2, which means your reference angle is going to be 45 degrees, which means your second quadrant angle is 135. All right. So again, since your sine theta is radical 2 over 2, your theta is your reference angle is going to be 45, which corresponds to a second quadrant angle of 135 degrees. So we have an r of 3 root 2 and a theta of 135. So that is one of the possible coordinates. Now you can go in a different direction if you want another pair. So let's use r equals negative 3 root 2. That would give us the coordinates of negative 3 root 2, 315. So if we went all the way around 315 degrees. And then we went 3 root 2 in the opposite direction, that would yield this point here. Or we can do negative 3 root 2, negative 45. So we go clockwise 45 degrees, and then we go in the opposite direction because r is negative, that would yield the same point. You could also use 3 root 2, comma 495 degrees, that would also work as well. 3 root 2, negative 225, basically using different coterminal angles for 135. All right, give 2b a shot. Now find a pair of polar coordinates for 5 root 2, negative 5 root 2. Find the x comma y equivalent. Go ahead and try that. Pause the video and restart it when you're ready. All right, so we have a quadrant 4 point, 5 root 2, negative 5 root 2. If you want to know exactly what that is, you can put that in your calculator, but it's a little over 7. So first we have to find r. So we're going to use the Pythagorean equation to find it. And if you plug everything in, r is plus or minus 10. 5 root 2 squared is 50 plus another 50. You get plus or minus 100. r is 10. How convenient. So now we have r. Now we must endeavor to find theta. So let's use cosine this time because we want to treat sine and cosine fairly. So we know r is 10. We know x is 5 radical 2. So you got cosine theta equals 5 root 2 over 10, which is, hey, root 2 over 2, which means you, again, have a 45 degree reference angle. The fourth quadrant angle that corresponds to 45 degrees is either negative 45 degrees or positive 315 degrees. So you have an r is 10 and theta of negative 45. So that is one of the coordinates. You could also use r is negative 10 with a theta of 135. So if 135 yields you a second quadrant angle, and then you will go 10 units in the opposite direction from the center. So that's one possible answer, and there's another possible answer. 
Now let's go in the other direction. Example 3a, find a pair of rectangular coordinates for negative 2 comma 30 degrees. So now we're just going the other way. We have a quadrant 3 point here. If you went negative 2, 30, we're going 30 degrees in the second circle, and then we're going to go two units in the opposite direction. So that leaves us here. So if we know that x is r cosine theta, we can just plug in r and theta. So r is negative 2, theta is 30. So x is negative 2 cosine 30. The cosine of 30 is radical 3 over 2. So negative 2 times radical 3 over 2 means that the x coordinate is negative 3. You can do the same to find the y coordinate, except this time you're going to use sine theta. So y equals negative 2 sine 30. Sine of 30 is 1 half, so y is negative 1. So now you have the x coordinate and the y coordinate, and you're pretty much done. The coordinates are negative radical 3 comma negative 1. So to convert from polar to rectangular, it's a little less work. You just use the formulas for x and y. x equals r cosine theta, y equals r sine theta, and you plug it in and you solve for each coordinate individually. Go ahead and take a stab at 3b, negative 8 comma 300, pause the video, and then restart it when you want to check your answer. All right, now we have a point in quadrant 2, so we're going to go 300 degrees, and I kind of cheated here because each circle I'm treating as four units away, so we can all fit it. So 300 degrees is over here. And then you're going to go 8 units in the opposite direction, which leaves you up at this point up here. So 300 degrees, 8 units in the other direction from the center. So x is r cosine theta. The cosine of 300 is 1 half. So x is negative 4. The y coordinate is negative 8 sine 300. So that's negative root 3 over 2 because sine is negative in the fourth quadrant. So y is 4 radical 3. So your coordinates are negative 4 comma 4 radical 3. Now, maybe you're not sure if these are right, but one thing you can check are just whether the coordinates are at least in the right place. So negative 4 means you're on this side. You're either in quadrant 2 or 3. 4 root 3 tells you you're in quadrant 2. So at any time, anytime you have a negative x and a positive y, you should have a point in quadrant 2, which you do. So just make sure, do a double check, because I'd hate to see you miss a question, because you did all this work right, but you flipped a sign by accident. and this is something that's very easy to check, just based on eyeballing which quadrant your coordinates are in. So sometimes a polar equation can be graphed more easily by transforming them into rectangular form. So think of this as two different languages that end up with the exact same meaning. So if you were to say brother in Spanish, you would say hermano, and that means the same thing as brother in English. So the same thing, you could have a polar equation and a rectangular equation that look totally different, but when you graph them, look exactly the same. So that's how this works, and sometimes it's easier to graph in one form than the other. So let's start with example 4a. Transform r squared cosine theta plus sine theta times cosine theta minus sine theta equals 1 into rectangular coordinates. So basically, you're going to get rid of the r's, cosines, and sines of theta, and turn them into something with only x's and y's, and that's your goal. Now, how do we do that? Well, the first thing, let's try to simplify this into something a little more useful. So we have r squared times the quantity cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta. You have a difference of squares here. So now we can do some substitutions. Let's first distribute the r squared. And we know that x is r cosine theta and y is r sine theta. So here, since x squared equals r squared cosine squared theta, and y squared is r squared sine squared theta, we can substitute y squared in for here, and x squared in for there, and we're done. So this equation in rectangular form is x squared minus y squared equals 1. So what you're going to want to do when you're going from polar to rectangular is to get components into the forms of r cosine theta and r sine theta, so you can convert them into x's and y's. It'll also it'll always be something you can do because you're going to have to have x's and y's. So if, it won't be a problem where you end up with something like an r squared sine theta where you can't really do anything with it. So x squared minus y squared equals 1. So you're going to substitute in r cosine theta for x, r sine theta for y. Now, for going from polar uh, for rectangular to polar, you're going to use a couple other rules. First of all, you're going to want to look for this x squared plus y squared pattern. You might get a multiple of x squared plus y squared, like 4x squared plus 4y squared. Just remember that r squared is x squared plus y squared. So if you ever see these two together, x squared plus y squared, you're going to think r squared. Also, x is r cosine theta, 
y is r sine theta. So whenever you see an x, you're going to plug in this. Whenever you see a y, you're going to plug in this. So let's plug them in and substitute. So x squared plus y squared becomes r squared. The two we leave behind or leave alone. x becomes r cosine theta. y becomes r sine theta. And now let's move things around a little bit. So we have r squared equals r squared times 2 sine theta cosine theta. Well, 2 sine theta cosine theta is simply equal to sine of 2 theta. So if you have one trigonometric function, even with the 2 theta, it's always better than having 2. So you have r squared equals r squared sine 2 theta. The r squareds cancel out. And your equation is 1 equals sine of 2 theta. So when you're going from polar coordinates, you're going to convert it such that it's in the form of theta and r. In this case, all the r's dropped out. You want to change all the x's and y's into r's and thetas. Example 5a, find a polar equation of the curve whose rectangular coordinate equation is x equals negative 3. So this is a matter of just plugging things in. Go ahead and tackle this one. This is a very short problem. All right, we know that x is r cosine theta because cosine theta is x over r. So now we're just going to plug in negative 3 for x. Hey, look at that. We're done. r cosine theta equals negative 3. Now, for polar form, there is no universal form. You could have r equals something or cosine theta equals something with an r. It doesn't really matter. But in this case, r cosine theta equals negative 3. And you're done. 5b, find a polar equation of the curve whose rectangular coordinate equation is x squared plus y squared equals 10y. All right, so use the technique that you used on example 4b to try to solve this one yourself. All right, so we remember that r squared is x squared plus y squared because r is plus or minus square root of x squared plus y squared. And we know that y is r sine theta. So now we're going to substitute those in. r squared equals 10r sine theta. So instead of x squared plus y squared, we have an r squared. And instead of sine theta, we instead of y, we have an r sine theta. So one of the r's cancels out, and you're left with r equals 10 sine theta. Now, if you forget that x squared plus y squared is r squared, what you'll end up doing is just plugging in r cosine theta for x, r sine theta for y. And then you can factor out an r, or an r squared in this case, and you'll be left with sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta, which, of course, is 1. So that's one way to do it in case you forget to notice this pattern. Example 6a, find a rectangular coordinate to the polar equation theta equals 90. So when you do this, remember, when your rectangular coordinate cannot have any thetas, it can have any r's, and it only have x's and y's. So we're going to use x equals r cosine theta. So let's substitute in 90 degrees for theta. x equals r cosine theta. And you're wondering, well, cosine 90 is 0. So that means the coordinate is the graph is x equals 0, which is true. Now, if you think about this, why not use sine? What if we use x equals r sine theta? Well, if you plug in sine of 90, you get 1, and you're left with the equation y equals r. Well, that's not in rectangular form, because you still have an r in there. This way, by using cosine, you eliminate the r, so you have the line x equals 0, the vertical line that goes through the origin. Example 6b. Find the rectangular coordinate to the polar equation r equals 3. So go ahead and try this one using one of the conversion formulas that you wrote down. All right, again, r is the square root of x squared plus y squared, so let's plug in that. So we know r squared is 9, so the answer is x squared plus y squared equals 9, which means if you were to graph this, well, guess what? It's a circle with a radius of 3. All right, so I figured I might as well show you guys how to graph some polar equations using Desmos. We'll have another one later on. So this is Desmos.com. What you want to do is you want to go to Window Settings and change it to Polar instead of Cartesian. So now you're going to see that familiar circular graph that we saw in some of the papers. So here you have circles, two units away in the center, four units, and of course one, one and a half, and so on. So if we were to graph r equals 3, which is example 6b, we get a circle, which makes sense because these are all the points that are three units away from the pole, so which is a circle. And then it makes obvious sense to graph x squared plus y squared equals 9 as the same shape. So these two are equivalent graphs. Just one is expressed in terms of polar 
r equals 3, and the other is expressed in terms of rectangular coordinates, x squared plus y squared equals 9. Example 6c, find a rectangular coordinate to the polar equation r sine theta plus 4 equals 0. So the same thing, you're going to look for an r sine theta or r cosine theta and substitute. Here, we have r sine theta equals y. So all we have to do is plug in y where we see the r sine theta. y plus 4 is 0, which means the equation is y equals negative 4. All right, so we're going to take a look at number 6c using Desmos. So let's start with the graph r sine theta plus 4 equals 0. And it doesn't work because it's not in terms of r. So what we have to do is let's rewrite it in terms of r. It'll be r sine equals negative 4, which means r equals negative 4 over sine theta. There it is. Hey, it's a line down there. Look at that. And when you did it into rectangular coordinates, you got the graph y equals negative 4, which is the same thing. Finally, we get to graphing equations. When graphing polar coordinates, you're going to plot points just like what you did back in the day with x's and y's. Instead of plugging in values of x to find values of y, you're going to plug in values of theta to find values of r. So we have example 7 to show us how to do that. Let's graph r equals sine 3 theta. So you're going to take values of theta, you're going to then multiply them by 3, and then you're going to find the sine of the value in each column. Now if you actually did that, you would get 0, sine of 45 is root 2 over 2, which is about 0 0.707, sine of 90 is 1, sine of 135 is negative radical 2 over 2, which is negative 0 0.707, 60, or sine of 180 is 0, and so on. Now if you were to use Desmos.com in your graphing calculator, this is what you get. You get a three-leaf rose, a three-leaf clover. So if we go back to Desmos.com and we are to graph r equals sine 3 theta, there it is. And we can zoom in to make it look bigger, to make it look prettier. And you can do some pretty funky stuff with Desmos. And you'll probably notice some patterns. You get like sine of 4 theta, you get a four, you get an 8 leaf clover, 5 theta, you get a 5 leaf clover of 2 theta, you get a 4 leaf clover. And you can do all sorts of weird things. I'm sure you guys are still listening. Cosine theta is a circle. Look at that. You have 1 plus cosine theta. You get something that looks like that. And you can do some pretty weird things. And this is a good tool to use to practice graphing. Or just to see what things look like. Now if you happen to have a TI-84 or 83, you can actually do graphing on your graphing calculator. The first thing you're going to have to do is press the mode button and switch it to polar. So you're going to scroll down and your calculator might look a little different. You're going to switch from function to polar mode. Hit enter and that changes that. Now let's say you wanted to graph something using polar coordinates. You have instead of y here you have r. So let's say we want to graph r1 equals sine 3 theta. So go to sine 3 theta. This is also the x button if you were to graph using x's. And let's change the window to make it look little better so let's make it pretty small so you can kind of see the graphs so I'm gonna scroll it down to 2 you can change the window size to whatever you'd like and let's make this 2 as well and let's graph and look at that, you get the same thing. So you can do the same graph using your TI if you don't have a computer in front of you or a Chromebook or a smartphone. You can still do this. It means you can do this on a test. That's it for section 14.3. If you have any more questions, let me know.